Job chapter 15 Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, Would a wise person answer with empty notions, or fill their belly with the hot east wind? Would they argue with useless words, with speeches that have no value? But you even undermine piety and hinder devotion to God. Your sin prompts your mouth. You adopt the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. Are you the first man ever born? Were you brought forth before the hills? Do you listen in on God's counsel? Do you have a monopoly on wisdom? What do you know that we do not know? What insights do you have that we do not have? The grey-haired and the aged are on our side, men even older than your father. Are God's consolations not enough for you, words spoken gently to you? Why has your heart carried you away, and why do your eyes flash, so that you vent your rage against God and pour out such words from your mouth? What are mortals, that they could be pure? Or those born of woman, that they could be righteous? If God places no trust in his holy ones, if even the heavens are not pure in his eyes, how much less mortals! who are vile and corrupt, who drink up evil like water. Listen to me, and I will explain to you. Let me tell you what I have seen, what the wise have declared, hiding nothing received from their ancestors, to whom alone the land was given when no foreigners moved among them. All his days the wicked man suffers torment, the ruthless man, through all the years stored up for him. Terrifying sounds fill his ears, when all seems well, marauders attack him. He despairs of escaping the realm of darkness. He is marked for the sword. He wanders about for food like a vulture. He knows the day of darkness is at hand. Distress and anguish fill him with terror. Troubles overwhelm him, like a king poised to attack, because he shakes his fist at God and vaunts himself against the Almighty, defiantly charging against him with a thick, strong shield. Though his face is covered with fat, and his waist bulges with flesh, he will inhabit ruined towns and houses where no one lives, houses crumbling to rubble. He will no longer be rich, and his wealth will not endure, nor will his possessions spread over the land. He will not escape the darkness, a flame will wither his shoots, and the breath of God's mouth will carry him away. Let him not deceive himself by trusting what is worthless, for he will get nothing in return. Before his time he will wither, and his branches will not flourish. He will be like a vine stripped of its unripe grapes, like an olive tree shedding its blossoms. For the company of the godless will be barren and fire will consume the tents of those who love bribes. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Their womb fashions deceit. Job chapter 16 Then Job replied, I have heard many things like these. Your miserable comforters, all of you! Will your long-winded speeches never end? What ails you that you keep on arguing? I also could speak like you if you were in my place. I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you. But my mouth would encourage you. Comfort from my lips would bring you relief. Yet if I speak, my pain is not relieved, and if I refrain, it does not go away. Surely, God, you have worn me out. You have devastated my entire household. You have shriveled me up, and it has become a witness. My gauntness rises up and testifies against me. God assails me and tears me in his anger and gnashes his teeth at me. My opponent fastens on me his piercing eyes. People open their mouths to jeer at me. They strike my cheek in scorn and unite together against me. God has turned me over to the ungodly and thrown me into the clutches of the wicked. All was well with me, but he shattered me. He seized me by the neck and crushed me. He has made me his target, 
His arches surround me. Without pity, he pierces my kidneys and spills my gall on the ground. Again and again he bursts upon me. He rushes at me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth over my skin and buried my brow in the dust. My face is red with weeping. Dark shadows ring my eyes. Yet my hands have been free of violence, and my prayer is pure. Earth, do not cover my blood. May my cry never be laid to rest. Even now my witness is in heaven. My advocate is on high. My intercessor is my friend, as my eyes pour out tears to God. On behalf of a man, he pleads with God as one pleads for a friend. Only a few years will pass before I take the path of no return. Job chapter 17 My spirit is broken, my days are cut short, the grave awaits me. Surely mockers surround me. My eyes must dwell on their hostility. Give me, O oh God, the pledge you demand. Who else will put up security for me? You have closed their minds to understanding, therefore you will not let them triumph. If anyone denounces their friends for reward, the eyes of their children will fail. God has made me a byword to everyone. A man in whose face people spit. My eyes have grown dim with grief. My whole frame is but a shadow. The upright are appalled at this. The innocent are aroused against the ungodly. Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to their ways, and those with clean hands will grow stronger. But come on, all of you. Try again. I will not find a wise man among you. My days have passed, my plans are shattered. Yet the desires of my heart turn night into day. In the face of the darkness, light is near. If the only home I hope for is the grave, if I spread out my bed in the realm of darkness, if I say to corruption, you are my father, and to the worm, my mother, or my sister, where then is my hope? Who can see any hope for me? Will it go down to the gates of death? Will we descend together into the dust? Romans, chapter 10 Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? 
and how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news! But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. But, I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. And Isaiah boldly says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, All day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. Psalm 28 To you, Lord, I call. You are my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who go down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, as I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, who speak cordially with their neighbors, but harbor malice in their hearts. Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done, and bring back on them what they deserve. Because they have no regard for the deeds of the Lord and what his hands have done, he will tear them down and never build them up again. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry of mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people, and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd, and carry them forever. Proverbs chapter 23 Saying 7 When you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you, and put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony. Do not crave his delicacies, for that food is deceptive. Saying 8 Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Saying 9 Do not eat the food of a stingy host. Do not crave his delicacies. For he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten and will have wasted your compliments. Saying 10 do not speak to fools, for they will scorn your prudent words. Saying 11 Do not move an ancient boundary stone, or encroach on the fields of the fatherless, for their defender is strong. He will take up their case against you. Saying 12 Apply your heart to instruction, and your ears to words of knowledge. Saying 13 do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. Punish them with the rod and save them from death. Saying 14 My son, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad indeed. My inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. Saying 15 Do not let your heart envy sinners, 
but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Saying 16 Listen, my son, and be wise, and set your heart on the right path. Do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat, for drunkards and gluttons become poor, and drowsiness clothes them in rags. Saying 17 Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it, wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. The father of a righteous child has great joy. A man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. Saying 18, My son, give me your heart, and let your eyes delight in my ways. For an adulterous woman is a deep pit, and a wayward wife is a narrow well. Like a bandit she lies in wait, and multiplies the unfaithful among men. Saying 19, Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights, and your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When will I wake up, so I can find another drink 